So, this is not the usual world we play in, obviously. This is my test world, because as I mentioned last episode, we are going to be taking on a bit of a challenge today, making a mushroom farm without use of any water. And I've done a little bit of testing uh, with some of my own designs, and I ended up going with a design uh, not necessarily made by me, because this is literally just like twice, three times more efficient than any of these other ones. I'll go over these really quickly though, because they were fun to make. This one uh, has a mushroom on each layer and then surrounded by blocks to uh, for them to grow on. And on a timer based on this hopper clock, which obviously you can time however you like, it retracts all of the pistons, destroying the mushrooms, making them fall down into these hoppers into this chest. And uh, I have some numbers here for you all. How efficient that is. Uh, this one is, I think, I didn't note down which one was which. I think this one uh, gives about two mushrooms of each individual color per hour. And obviously, that is uh, for one of the modules you can... Uh, there we go. That's the retraction. You can stack this one, uh, though. It's not very easy to stack it very high because you'll have to deal with redstone signals. You can use observers to... Do all kinds of bullshit with that. Um, it's not a very efficient one. But about two mushrooms of each color per hour. Then this one, it works by retracting the blocks beneath uh, the, the spread areas, uh, for lack of a better term. And making them fall down into these hoppers, into this chest. Uh, getting you about one per hour <laughs> uh, of each color. And then this one works in a very similar way, but rather than retracting the blocks the uh, the mushrooms grow on, it actually just pushes the mushrooms into the hoppers just like that. And this one actually gives about like less than one an hour. Uh, the yield rate for these two might be switched around. Again, you can stack these to the build height if you wanted to. Uh, you'd need to do a lot of them for it to become efficient. Then we go to this one, and admittedly, the way I tested this one, uh, I tested it with uh, four red mushrooms, four brown mushrooms. I then extended it further to see how it would uh, handle a larger amount of yield. Um, this one, with just like one module, eight mushrooms like that, yields six of each per hour. So I, I I forgot to add one more uh, brown mushroom uh, thing here. Uh, so having tripled that, this should now get about 18 an hour. And as you can clearly see, it's doing quite well. I did do these calculations by upping the tick speed of the world to 100 and letting it go for an hour and then dividing the yield by about 5. So... We're going to go with this design in the survival world, and we're going to extend it quite far. It's also not a very cheap version, because you obviously need uh, two observers for each mushroom that you plant. So, But we've got plenty of quartz, so I think we should be fine. And this, obviously, um, it, it is a cheaper design. It, it's overcomplicated, it doesn't work as well, but it's a cheaper design, and the cheapest design of all is this, because you don't even need sticky pistons for it, but it's very, very inefficient. So, let's go to the survival world, and uh, I'll also update you on what I did off-screen there. Okay, so between episodes, I did a couple of things. Uh, most importantly, uh, we'll get to all of this in a moment. Most importantly, I collected some slime balls. Remember the village we found, I think, like five or six episodes ago, next to a swamp. I used my elytra, made some fireworks with the uh, with the gunpowder I had. Made an elytra, well, I had an elytra. I uh, went over there, used my looting three sword, which, uh, which I made from enchanting. I think I did that between episodes as well. And I got about three stacks of slime balls. So I don't have to make a slime ball farm anytime soon. Then, after that happened, I remembered there was a bastion very close to where I am right now. It's actually a very big one. I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't record that because it would have been a lot of fun. Most importantly, because apparently, I didn't even know this, you can get netherite scraps in bastion chests. I didn't know that. 
<laughs> so we've got three netherite scraps now. Uh, let's place that in here. And we also just got a lot of uh, random crap. Uh, we didn't find another lodestone. I was looking around there for like a long time. We we just didn't get another one. Uh, the Bastion didn't have one. Our storage system is going to have to be upgraded a little bit to accommodate more different kinds of junk blocks though. Um, let me go sort out the inventory again because I totally didn't do that off screen because I'm totally smart like that. And I'll be back with you with the requirements for the upcoming farm. Okay, so we need observers, which apparently... I thought you needed a dispenser for that, but maybe that's a dropper. Uh, eight is actually exactly what we want. We actually want 16. Uh, so let me go get some more cobblestone. Probably from the overworld. I don't think we have any more cobblestone in here, do we? We do not. Um, let me go get some of that in the mine. Oh, for those who are curious, uh, the Bastion is somewhere around here. I think I might have already shown it off on screen before, but in case I haven't, uh, it's looted now, obviously. I had three netherite scraps, which means that it actually inspires me a little bit to go um, netherite mining soon. I'm probably going to do that after making an EXP farm. Uh, this is it. And it's actually ridiculously large. It also goes underground and stuff. And it goes up far, quite far. And it's pretty deep. And it's just generally a big, big bastion without a bridge. So no lodestones, no gold blocks uh, to mine anyway. There were gold blocks in one or two of the chests, I think. But uh, other than the netherite, a bit of a disappointing one. But the netherite kind of made up for that. I don't even need to go mining, uh, because obviously I just have a very big chest full <laughs> of cobblestone here. And as a matter of fact, are we going to need more cobblestone? Probably not. So we don't even need to bring anything with us. And just like that, we've got plenty of stuff to make ourselves all the observers we need. Which is hopefully going to be quite a lot, because I would prefer... If we, uh, if we had a static supply of mushrooms, we're probably going to upgrade our food supply to something more stackable soon, because the whole mushroom stew thing is kind of annoying. But I do think that having a unlimited supply of mushrooms, probably a good idea. Also, that's a sentence I didn't think I'd ever say out loud. And just like that, we have everything we... almost everything we need. We also need pistons. I knew I forgot something. 32 pistons, at least to start with. We're gonna go with 16 uh, long, so we need 16 observers, 16 pistons on either side. Now the main question becomes, where do we actually put this farm? Because we don't really have a lot of real estate to work with. I'm thinking maybe we want to put it here. Maybe we do. But that would require us to set free these. Why aren't you just jumping down there and attacking these guys, is my question. I mean, <laughs> I'll just knock you off. I might just want to set these guys free. I'll, I'll capture some new ones. I, I think it's about time to... They're going to get upset with me when I break those blocks over there, though. That's not going to be good for me. You know what? You're all just going to die now. <laughs> I'm very sorry to inform you, but... You're gonna attack me either way, so might as well just get my stuff back. Uh, and with my stuff, I mean the soul speed boots that I don't want or need anyway. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be the location for our farm, I guess. So I'll clear that out. Oh! If you don't have silk touch, this actually does yield. Golden nuggets. I... Did I know it with Silk Touch before? I must have, clearly. Oh, by the way, not unimportant is actually making the piston sticky. That's what I needed the slime balls for in the first place. Okay, so what we're going to start by doing is we're going to see where this actually sent us at our home. Because I think I still want to have a way of like walking into here, especially, yeah, especially since this is going to be our food supply, right? I, I want a way to just walk in here. Have a chest right here that has all of the yield in it and just take the, the mushrooms out of that chest. Honestly, I, I might just want to funnel it right into this chest, honestly. I, I'll see. So we are going to start by placing 16 
pieces of netherrack here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's gonna take a while. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, and then on the other side as well. And that is where the actual mushrooms are gonna be growing. I'll clear out the area uh, after I block it out a little bit more, because obviously this tree needs to go, and I'll probably need to get rid of some of the floor around here as well, because uh, I don't want mushrooms to spawn on any locations that I won't be harvesting them. But uh, yeah, so my pickaxe is too powerful, dude. We'll want to not fall down, ideally. Okay, so now we have got this little triangle of blocks here, which on um, these blocks we are going to place the mushrooms. But as I said, probably want to get rid of this tree first and foremost, so let me go get a hoe. I probably have a, a diamond hoe or something somewhere. I mean, I've got this golden hoe, which I honestly don't care too much about, so let's just use that one. And I think golden hoes probably are fairly quick at... Uh, could be quicker. I suppose it'll do for now, though. Next up, all of the pistons, which are going to be a little tricky to place, but you want to place them, obviously, facing these blocks with one block gap in between. And you don't want to fall down. So, again, let me place down some blocks there and place down all of the pistons everywhere. Uh, when there's no block under that, it's no issue. You can just place them on the side of the last piston, and I like that will be going. Uh, you don't want to be facing too diagonally because you'll probably face them uh, this way. And obviously that's not what you want, is it now? Or you'll end up doing that, which is also really annoying to deal with. Placing it first down can be a little bit tricky. After that, it's probably easiest to just place the other pistons on the side of the pistons you've already placed because... Piston orientation is always just a little bit of a bothersome thing. You'll just have to kind of deal with that, I'm sorry. And now it's time to start placing the observers. You want to place them facing this way, but obviously there's nothing you can actually place them on. So what we'll do is we'll just place down some uh, netherrack on top of here. There's a lot of ways you can do this if you want to do it otherwise, but I find it's the easiest to just place down some netherrack. Get your observers out and just place them like this. You don't actually need for redstone purposes to place blocks or any like redstone on the pistons. Placing redstone on the pistons wouldn't work anyway. Uh, they'll just power the pistons when they detect a block update. I'll show you that in a moment actually because I'll be destroying these blocks. Uh, destroying a block, you see? It powers the piston. It's going to be powering, powering all of the pistons. <laughs> It should be placing the blocks back now, which is a little bit worrying that it doesn't do that. And why can't I jump? Okay, maybe some block lag there. Uh, it should be placing them back as well, which worries me because it did in the test world. Actually, no, that makes perfect sense because observers uh, give a one tick pulse. And as an example, the reason it didn't do it before is because uh, you have one block update when uh, it grows and then one when it get, gets removed, so it uses two really quick uh, redstone pulses and it does that. And that's the basic idea here. That's how this farm works. Also clearing out a little area uh, beneath here because we're going to want to uh, be able to use this area anyway for some train tracks and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and I needed to clear them out because I need to replace these blocks as well. Actually, something I just realized after giving you that marvelous tip about placing uh, them down against Netherrack, you can do the same thing with the observers. You could with the pistons, but a lot easier. You could just place them on the side of each other. It uses the, damn it. It uses the uh, direction you're facing, not actually the block you're uh, clicking on when you face or uh, place down the blocks. So, yeah. Now, we want to make sure that we can actually make train tracks or uh, minecart rails, as you officially need to call them. I always call them train tracks. I don't know why, because, well, <laughs> because they are uh, down here. So we'll probably need to go make some of those. Obviously, we're going to need 32, but actually, actually, we're also going to need a little bit more than that. And we're going to need some uh, probably not open chests when there's a hole in your wall <laughs> with uh, potentially piglins out there. We're also going to need to have some uh, power. 
I'm sorry, some powertrain tracks. Only four of them, really. Uh, we need to make six of them because that's just how the recipe works and nothing much I can do about that, really. And we just place them down like this. The ones on the ends, we will be using the powered rails for, however, so that we have the hopper minecart going back and forth. Place down some blocks so that when the minecart reaches here and these are powered, it'll actually bounce back and it'll be going back and forth pretty much forever. We need to turn four of our chests into hoppers. One, two, three, and four. Then we need to make two minecarts as well. Uh, minecarts do not stack. I don't know why I forgot that. And turn two of them into minecart hoppers. And then you can make levers or redstone torches or whatever you want uh, for the uh, the powered rails. I'll go with redstone torches for right now just because it's the easiest for me to make. And with that we place down our redstone torches beneath here. You can do this more efficiently with just one redstone torch between the two of them, but I just don't think it looks as neat. And even though we're not going to be looking a lot of this, it doesn't hurt to have it look at least kind of. Oh my god. Oh my. Hello there. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry uh, I have to murder your family now, but you're dangerous to me. Uh, let's eat some food. I have some uh, cooked pork chop because there were also a lot of pigs in that swamp that I pretty much exterminated. It was a little bit tricky to get those there because this is just being suspended in midair at this point. But uh, we've got our redstone torches here, so let's block this off as well. And we can put our hopper minecarts in here. And those are going to be collecting, uh, probably a little bit early to put them in there. Those are going to be collecting our mushrooms when they actually grow. Uh, but you'll be thinking, I, do I need to go in here and collect them from the hopper minecarts? That is actually, I mean, you totally could. Uh, we're not going to, but you totally could. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mass up our minecarts. This is why you don't do the minecarts first. <laughs> I just wanted to show you, okay? I just wanted to show you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to place a chest in the middle. It's a kind of temporary solution because I kind of want to have those hoppers coming all the way over here and maybe make a dropper here, which then drops it into a chest above here so that I can literally just hop, hop up here open the chest and have my mushrooms. For right now, we're going to go with a little bit more of a basic premise, and that is putting a chest in here and just some hoppers into the chest. And yeah, the minecarts are actually not going to stick on the hopper until all of the mushrooms are loaded into the chest, but Honestly, uh, the thing is, this is going to be such a slow farm anyway that any time it even has a mushroom inside of the hopper minecarts, it's only going to have like one or maybe two inside of it. So if it doesn't dump all of them at once, it'll do it next round. And if this ends up being a very, like very, 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 very big farm, you might want to make like a load off station at the end here where... Um, maybe it even circles and all that kind of good stuff. I don't really think that is as important right now. But you could definitely do that. So then the last really important step is just placing down the mushrooms. I don't know exactly what the most efficient pattern is. But from what I've seen online, yeah, again, this is not my own design. I'm I'm very sorry about that, I guess. Um, I, I see everybody using 444. I think that has something to do with the fact that when there's four mushrooms here, there's only an opportunity for one more to grow. And that then gives a increased chance of it actually happening on one of the blocks around here, something like that, probably. I don't exactly know for sure. So you want to apparently do four, and then four of the other one, and then four brown ones, and then uh, I need a couple more red mushrooms to uh, finish the bats on here. So let me go find some. I think over at my portal, I'll be able to find some. I'm aware that this is not a very clear tutorial, by the way. Uh, it's mostly because I'm also in survival and trying to not get murdered by all the uh, hoglins around here. If you guys would like a more step-by-step -step tutorial of how to build this, do let me know in the comments below, because I can just make a creative mode tutorial on how to build this. Though, 
again, it's not my design, so <laughs> you probably can find a good tutorial as it is already uh, on YouTube if you just uh, look around for it a little bit. Okay, so this now looks like it should be finished, right? And to a certain extent, it is. But these mushrooms can actually spread a lot farther than you think. Uh, they have the chance to spread onto the observers and onto the pistons. And obviously, if they spread onto the pistons when the pistons fire, they're also going to destroy uh, the the mushrooms. Ah, there we go. You see a mushroom uh, spread to one of the observers. So what you can do to prevent that is just put blocks on top. That's literally the easiest and pretty much the only way to prevent that from happening. So what I will probably do is use the same block I used for my house, which is crimson wood. Please stop attacking me. You're only a baby. You can't even really hurt me. Okay, so <laughs> I'm placing down these uh, crimson planks. I think those are the only two layers we really need to have crimson planks on. I'm probably going to put a roof on top of it as well, just so that it looks a little bit nicer from uh, from up above when we uh, just when we're walking around these general areas but uh right now this should just be straight up functional so let's connect the the wood up to our house here so that we actually like have everything properly connected and that should be everything there is to this really so it's not a very big room to live in <laughs> But uh, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't necessarily need to be. And I think we can even... Yeah, we can even make like some stairs here, right? Do uh, do a little bit of this. Uh, we'll probably need to... Ah, uh, we're going to need to do a lot of stair work on that. Um, I'll probably do that off screen. <laughs> going to be honest with you. Between episodes, I'll probably do that. But... I don't know. Maybe we can get away with just doing this and then putting some slabs here. Maybe we can. I'll see. First and foremost, I'm going to build a roof. All right, this is now a uh, kind of nice part about my house. It's uh, uh, probably... Uh, we'll probably want to fill in these walls like this, right? And then make the floor look a little bit nicer around here as well. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you stay on track. Oh, you... Well, you actually had a mushroom inside you. I, wow. <laughs> I am somewhat impressed by that, honestly. Okay, so we can just come down here, open the chest, and it doesn't have any mushrooms in it right now. Which... Is that because the hoppers aren't working, or is that just because the hoppers aren't working? Because they are getting powered. We need to place it back one more block. And that is a functional farm. Honestly, it's probably even best if we block this off like this, but then getting down there is going to be more difficult as well. Maybe, 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 maybe we don't even need to have like a little step up here. We could just, yeah, we could just do that. That that looks good. That looks way better, actually. Um, damn it. <laughs> and there we have it. We have a functioning farm, which uh, is also expandable. Uh, maybe we need to do a couple more things to prevent unwanted spread of mushrooms, honestly. I think we should be fine. My, my fear is if one grows here, it might fall down to here. But honestly, maybe... Let's, let's check. Maybe that'll actually even get picked up by the Hopper Minecart. It will! Nothing to be afraid about. We just have a functioning farm. Let's uh, let's go close up the backside of it as well because I kind of forgot about that being a thing. Of course, if we ever want to expand it, it's as easy as just repeating the process we just did. Just building another. You can pretty much build them one block at a time if you want to. I'd recommend building them in expansions of eight doing uh, four of each mushroom just so that everything averages out and you get the same amount of mushrooms of each color and you build the blocks per four so you probably want to expand them per eight but you can definitely just add one more block to the end of what you've already built if you don't have the resources to do more i don't know if that would actually help you in any meaningful way probably not but you can the only downside being is it's now dark enough in here, in theory, for zombie piglin to spawn, I think. Which could be annoying. 
Uh, it's not dark enough for anything else, or it's not big enough for anything else. I don't think hoglins will be able to spawn in here. So maybe we'll have some zombie piglin walking around our house. And if that's that's the price for having unlimited brown mushrooms, mostly, so far, uh, I'm kind of willing to pay that. It kind of looks cool just being able to look into here. Um, oh, we can just we can just use glass. I was gonna say, but I kind of want to make sure that like we can. I don't know. This is also kind of nice. Just like a a little secret room where you don't even know what's going on. What is random mysterious mushrooms in it? That's also kind of fun. I don't know. I, I'm probably gonna play some glass in here. That, uh, that seems like it would be a better way to go about doing it, because it would just be... Also, if we place glass in there, there's no reason for us to worry about anything that spawns in there, because it's going to be trapped. It's also going to make it a little bit more annoying to expand it when and if we want to expand it. So I'm probably... For the time being, I'm going to leave it open. And with that, I think we have uh, reached a point where we are comfortable saying... Let's end of this episode. We have a passive growth of mushrooms, so we're never going to ever be hungry again. We're probably going to make a hoglin farm sooner or later as well, just because it's so much better as a food source. But this is uh, this is something that I've wanted to do since starting this series, but you kind of need sticky slime balls, uh, all slime balls, or sticky pistons uh, as such slime balls to make this work. So I didn't do it before. Also probably want to close up all of those blocks down here. I'm going to keep an eye on if actually we have any mushroom growth down here, because if so, we're going to close it up. Probably going to close up that area over there anyway. There's a little bit of maintenance to do, but the main build is done. And again, I'm very sorry if this wasn't a very like clear and uh, clear cut followable. Is that a word followable? It is now. Uh, tutorial? Because I, I need to go back and forth, getting items, placing items down, trying to not die, and also explain what I'm doing. So, again, if you guys are interested for a actual proper tutorial of this, where I go step by step and I can 100% focus on this, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, but, again, it probably is a little bit obsolete, as there are already plenty of tutorials of this specific build out there, I do believe. So, until the next time, I've been Blogger, you've been awesome. If you've enjoyed the video, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you back next time. Bye.